Welcome to this Warhammer Dad Command Building tutorial. Today, this is what we're going to be looking at a Lava River game board built in a semi modular fashion. As an uh, introduction, uh, I was doing a web search and uh, I found several different Lava Rivers uh, on, the, on the web. Uh, Monoclear, I'm not sure how to say his name, has a very good pictorial tutorial along with how to build some terrain and some trees and stuff on the DACA forums. MiniWarGaming.com had a few, uh, and then there were some uh, in different books, and to be perfectly honest, the Games Workshop How to Build Terrain book had uh, some really good ideas in there that I used, so sort of a conglomeration of all of those uh, to put this together. Um, watch the whole thing the whole way through. As I go through, I will list some of the mistakes I made uh, and things that will save you uh, headache and time. Uh, but without further ado, let's start with the materials and uh, I'll go over some of my thoughts with those. So on to the materials. Uh, I have been accused more than once of being cheap and to be honest, I did this project, the whole thing for right around 50 bucks. Um, starting out, you need two two foot by eight foot pieces of either pink or blue foam board. One inch thick is what I used. You could do three quarter inches if you wanted. Uh, it's really up to you. Next is the, I used the one eighth inch hardboard. And what I did is I bought a full uh, four by eight sheet for nine bucks. Uh, I just had them cut it into four uh, two by uh, four sheets for me. Uh, that way I spent uh, a total of nine dollars instead of buying three uh, two by four sheets at six dollars each and spending 18 and then I had enough uh, left over to make all of the little bits of terrain and I still have more and I'm still building more terrain I got to build a lot more uh, site blocking terrain to match this um, but uh, moving on Next, uh, one tube of liquid nails to glue the foam down to the board, uh, and then a couple of tubes of just regular acrylic latex caulk, uh, cheapest kind you can find. I got it for a buck thirty, one a pop, uh, in a contractor pack, and uh, there was plenty left over to build all of the extra terrain. Next, I bought a 50-pound uh, bag of playground sand for 350 at the Home Depot. It was just way easier than digging it up out of the yard or anything. Uh, and then uh, I bought a gallon of the PVA glue. I've been using a whole lot of it. It works out to be like a sixth of the cost, you know, 30 cents for one of the bottles. And I just have three of those little bottles that I keep refilling with it. Uh, should last me a good long time. And I ended up using about 250s worth of glue based on uh, that amount. It cost you a good bit more if you did it some other way. All right, next I got a quart of just black latex paint, cheapest kind I could find. Uh, and I used about every drop of it. May end up needing two, but a gallon was just too much paint to have uh, laying around the house. Uh, and then I got acrylic uh, art paints, just your craft paints. I found them on sale for 33 cents a piece at a Michael's. Um, I've seen them anywhere from 59 cents to two bucks. Uh, I just got the cheapest kind I could get, which uh, brings us to a grand total of $41.73. If you had to buy another quart of uh, black paint, you're going to go up to around 49. Uh, the glue, however much, and your art paint. So, you know, well under $60 at, uh, at a max here. Last, you're going to need all your normal stuff, brushes, caulk, gun, cutting tools, cleaning supplies, all of that kind of stuff. I had it all around the house. I didn't include it into the cost of this, uh, so you'll have to think about that uh, before you get started. All right, well, that does it for the materials and the overall cost, so let's get into the actual building. All right, so the first step, I don't have my table saw here. It's in storage, uh, so I had to do it by hand. So I cut two by two panels just using a skill saw uh, and lines and laid them out and you can see that I went ahead and numbered them uh, to make sure they stay in the, into the right areas. Um, and uh, next step will be to cut out matching two by two one inch thick foam panels. All right, and as you see here, I just lay the actual planks on top of the foam uh, and use the side of the plank as my uh, yardstick to cut uh, and that way they get pretty close. I'm going to have to do some trimming but uh, uh, 
this way I just use that as my uh, cutting guide. And as you see, I can't do this one-handed, but uh, you just cut through. It's going to take, take several passes to do this. And then I make sure that I'm doing it on top of one of those spare pieces of board so I don't cut up my wife's card table uh, since my sawhorses are also in storage. Next, I just make sure that I go ahead and label them. So that is panel number four. Label this with a number four so I keep each one straight. All right, and there you have it. There's the stack of everything that's gonna be that board. Um, with its individual hardboards. I still have that one little bit of 1 8 inch hardboard underneath. And then you're going to have about four feet of leftover foam, which is fine because you can use it to make all of the little doodads you're going to be putting on the board later. Uh, but that is how tall the board is going to be when you stack it up. So we are talking, when, you, when all is said and done, about seven inches of height. So two foot by two foot by seven inches. Um, once you add in the texturing, okay, let's make it eight inches total. Uh, but that's how much space it's going to take to stack them. All right, uh, next step is going to be to actually uh, lay it out and draw the lava field onto the foam. So next step is done. I laid them all out. I double-sided taped them down to their plywood. Um, once I've got them cut out and glued to the boards, I will trim up the excess boards if I need to. Um, and then this one over here, I just had no idea what I wanted to do. So I finally decided on the red. I'm just going to go with the big island and then I'm going to cut, uh, some high ground, uh, maybe a hill with a bridge on it, uh, to do that. Uh, I tried to cut them so they are modular, um, and can be moved around. Um, so hopefully that will work out. I measured these are all eight inches from the corner eight inches from the corner uh, and then two inches across so hopefully those will match up uh, and other than that it should not be there's not a whole lot to have to match if you move them around so all right next step is to actually get out the hot wire cutter and start cutting some foam so here's the dry fit um, so I've got a few places uh, this is going to need some touch up here um, it's not sitting even on the table. Once I push everything down, it should be okay. Uh, I'm thinking that that over there is going to be a big hill. Uh, I'll put a, a hill that I can put on there, but then I'll, I may also build uh, for Lord of the Rings a uh, sort of a volcano, Mount Doom kind of thing. So this could uh, double as a Lord of the Rings uh, board. Uh, so this is it dry fit. The next step will be to glue it down. Um, as you notice, I went through and uh, roughed up the edges. I do that with the back of a heavy knife blade um, with a lock blade. Uh, and then I went through and put some a few little cracks in there. Uh, I'm not sure how they'll turn out. Um, and so next step will be to glue these down. Uh, and then after that will be to glue the sand on. Uh, so. I will come back once I start getting them glued. All right, so here is the start of some of the extras. I used all the excess uh, of the foam. I'm gonna have a couple of little volcanic sprues. That's gonna be a big volcano for use in Lord of the Rings or whatever. Uh, got the first couple. This is the extra hardboard left over from uh, buying the plywood sheet, I mean a full sheet instead. And then these are going to be some uh, spires. Um, so anyway, those are something you can do. Uh, next step is to still glue to the hardboard. All right, so gluing up the panels, I'm only doing them two at a time so that I can make sure that they match up. So panel one and two uh, meet up very nicely. Uh, and then I put a bunch of heavy weight on them. Uh, then tomorrow I will work on the next panel or two. It's going to take a few days, but I want to make sure that they match up and then I'll just trim the outsides. So here they are. I decided to do the last four all at one go. Uh, hopefully they don't shift. I had to pull it apart one time because things were shifting on me, uh, but I think they're probably 
Um, okay, except maybe I'm not sure this one is. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so while the main board is drying, you can start working on some of your accessories. So these are just going to be rocks that are kind of standing up. This is a sort of molten lava dual field. This is going to be some uh, wasteland rocks. Uh, couple little lava spouts, uh, filled them with some caulk. The easiest way to do that is to take a little piece of your, you know, scrap uh, foam, wet the end of it a little bit, dampen it so it doesn't stick to the caulk, and just kind of mash it down. Uh, and you can make whatever size little damper you need. Uh, and then these are going to be little sort of lava spout spires, uh, just glued up a lot of scraps. And then this is going to be Mount Doom sort of volcano. Uh, and then this is just going to be a base uh, for like a ruined castle or whatever happens to be on it. Uh, so uh, this is all done with the scraps from the foam and some of the extra hardboard scrap for buying a 4x8 sheet instead of spending the extra money on the uh, smaller ones. Alright, uh, now let's go check on the board. Alright, so here is the glued up versions and what you'll see is there I had some cut out some tear out when I did it uh, so I'm going to try some spackling on the edges and see how it works it doesn't have to be too much too bad and this is just that's just because of uh, the table itself um, but the spackling doesn't have to be too clean or too elegant because it's going to be covered in sand. But uh, here's where we stand so far. Dry fit together after gluing still looks pretty good. Alright, so that little bit of spackling is done. Spackling is done. Um, pick up some of those little edges so it's a little straighter. Uh, and now is the last chance to go through and look uh, before you start putting sand on there to make sure that you've got all the cracks and holes and stuff that you want. Uh, so that it looks lava-like and not, you know, foam-like. All right, so I'm going to go through. I'll probably add a couple of little uh, cracks, uh, but in general, I think I'm pretty, pretty much done. I might just widen a few of the ones I have so they're a little more obvious once the sand's on there. Uh, and after that, we'll start gluing sand on. So this is the end of part one of this Warhammer Dad tutorial on making a lava river board. Please uh, stay tuned and check out part number two.